Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of The Kevin Moore Show. Now on today's show, I'm about to be joined by my guest, Clifford Mahuti. Now I did this interview on location, and it was a fascinating interview with Clifford. Now, just to give you a bit of background on Clifford Mahuti, he is a member of the Zuni Pablo Indian tribe of New Mexico. Mahuti is a retired civil environmental engineer and worked in many projects, including with the Shell Oil Company and the US federal government in environmental justice for Indian tribes. Now Mahuti is active in the Zuni order of the Kachina, clan leadership and is a wisdom keeper of the Zuni history. So enjoy my interview with Clifford. So Clifford Mahuti, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here. If you were to sum up your work, what, what would it be in a sense? Well, my work involves a lot of different subjects that have been sort of been lost in a way for many, many years. My uh, mission for the work that I do is to convey information and pass on the knowledge for future generations of what the Zuni people and other Indian tribes have uh, practiced for thousands of years with with the uh, way the world is going at a fast rate, a lot of the information has been suppressed or are being completely ignored or has been completely lost. So what I have done throughout the years is that I've done a lot of research, primarily with my tribe and also uh, the, the things that are relative to the spirituality the culture and the religion of our tribe, the Zuni tribe. I also include other tribes like the Hopi and the Southwest Pueblo Indian tribes that are situated around Albuquerque, New Mexico and Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I have been studying this for many, many years, not only uh, from the books, but also from the oral history passed on by my elders uh, throughout the years that they also accumulated from their elders. So how many native tribes were there in America before it was discovered? Well, it, it depends on the, who's writing a book. But basically, they, we were, our ancestors were by the millions, tens of millions, all the way from Canada, clear down to South America. And there's estimates that are made between 80 and 100 million people and many different tribes. So depending on whose information that you look at, so we're talking millions, not just small pockets. We, today, I believe that we only have a, a very small portion of it. It might not be even in the millions I'm talking about the full-blooded American Indians. Of course, there's been a lot of branches that uh, branched off into mixtures. So right now, I don't not really know, unless you go to the Census Bureau and find out the total amount of American Indian community at large. And the difference will be because its Indian tribe has their quota blood quantum of what qualifies them as in a tribal member. What's the future of the tribes, do you think, in, in America right now? I mean, are they, are they going to last? The future of the tribes right now is that in the United States is that uh, we are what we call reservation Indians. We have been confined to reservations that have been selected by the conqueror, in this case, the United States government, and they have been relocated, our tribes have been relocated from their natural and their homelands to, to reservations, and they were forced to do that way back in the 18, 1800s and early 1900s. So the future of the American Indian is still on the downfall right now because of outside interference. 
and obviously I've been traveling the States and I've seen a few of the reservations and there's always a casino there and something else. And just for people who will travel to these places, what, why is that so? You mean about the casinos? Yeah, why are the casinos there? Yeah, The casinos is, a, um, is supposedly a money-making operation that was supposed to benefit the Indian tribes. However, I have worked on the reservation casino operations as a um, environmental engineer for before they be uh, build an Indian casino they have to go through the same procedure for an environmental assessment and in some cases they have to go into an impact statement under EPA regulations. I believe that none of the Indian tribes tribal casinos actually went through the whole process. The reason that the Indian casinos are there on Indian reservations is that it's what they call, it's a tax-free zone and it's a uh, non-fee land and the Indian casinos are not owned by the Indian tribes. And uh, what it is is that the the big corporations like Harris and other big companies in the gambling business, they come in there and they sign a lease anywhere from a 20 to 30 year lease with the tribe. And uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs is the one that negotiates on behalf of the tribe. And the tribes are just basically follows what the government tells them to do. And of course, the the money that is derived from the casinos, only a very small portion of it goes to the tribe. So in essence, what it is, is that we have not conquered alcoholism, domestic violence, poverty. So they dropped in another negative uh, system called Indian casinos. So a lot of their money goes to the Indian casinos like they would do if there was alcohol or other drugs. So before the white man came to America, there were no uh, smallpox, there was no syphilis, there was, there was hardly any diseases before there was the conquering of the Indian tribes. No, there was never any communicable diseases. They, this was a pristine area. And uh, they only the American Indian only took what they could use for that particular period, whether it be for a winter or whether it's for this, for their food sources were always constantly supplying them and they only took what they did for their survival. And obviously the, uh, your tribe and other tribes, they carry um, stories of, of how uh, the tribes came to be and the, the history of those tribes as well. And uh, we'll, we'll get into some of, of those stories. Um, are you allowed to share those stories as a tribe member? Well, a, a lot of, we're allowed to a certain extent. I believe that the reason a lot of tribes sort of pull back on a lot of the information is that they, we were forced to do that because when Christianity took over this country, anything that the Indians told about themselves, their origin or connection with other forces or natural forces, they were told that that does not exist and that's, uh, that's not the way it is. This is the way it is. And said that we were, you know, that the, the Bible replaced the history of the American Indian. And there were so many different tribes and their connections uh, with where their origins or were in their oral history. Have you suffered for sharing some of the stories that you've shared? Well, the only thing that I can really share is basically the uh, little information I have about my tribe, the Zuni tribe. But it's in it has been recorded by different groups such as the Smithsonian. That's where I get some of the information. However, just like any other book, uh, history is written by those that come and conquer the nation or have been there and taken care of what uh, 
was there in order to satisfy their own interpretations. So there's a lot of information about Zuni that I have researched throughout the years are not ex really true of what the white man had wrote about us. So going back to your early years then, uh, did you have much interest in the Zuni stories that you tell now? Uh, my generation, it was a common thing. We were told stories, we were told history, we were, told, we were taught religion, we were taught survival uh, at the earliest ages and throughout the years. And we also had to go through the rituals of becoming members of certain organizations within the tribal uh, spirituality and, uh, and the, for example, like the Kachina system. And so we are all exposed to that and we're taught like that. And basically they're all about nature and about how to survive in the world and how to take care of each other and also how to take care of Mother Earth. So uh, on the conferences that you attend, uh, obviously you, you know, your angle is up on the, the star connection that your people were um, interacted back, would you say centuries or well, centuries ago, I guess, uh, with, with star people, people not from the, the earth, and they helped the tribes to progress to the level that they got to before the white man came in. That is correct. Uh, any Indian tribe and other Aboriginal groups have a direct connection with what we term the star people. And we are also connected with the whole universal system and that's where our spirituality comes in or our practices of uh, whether it's technology, whether it's agriculture, governmental system, survival systems are based upon the information transfer that was made no one knows how long ago so the American Indian says uh, since time immemorial which they have no no way of saying that, well, it was a thousand years ago, it was a million years ago, but they all know that that their origin of what how their survival is based upon outside interference or uh, uh, outside uh, integration of the systems that they provided us some time back. So there are stories of... Um you know, um, these star beings coming down and manipulating the DNA of the original native Indians. Is that right? Well, they, the, the way they explain it is that we are children of the star people. So that means that they, would, they had quite an influence in our, our structure and our, of what they call the, the uh, upgrade, if you want to call it that. And also the, the common terminology nowadays is the download of information using the computer uh, language is that we were downloaded for, our ancestors were downloaded for technology, other information for survival and also how to take care of each other and uh, like I said, take care of the planet. And you can diversify that into many, many different types of subjects. So would that have been the same sort of time as, or would that have had the same connection to, you know, the Egyptian um, uh, pharaohs and the Egyptian um, dynasty and other you know, sort of Maya um, dynasties as well, where they, they, you know, they they built these pyramids and they seem to have technology that that you know you know that was un, unknown to us even right now how they built these these structures. Was that was that around the same lineage or? I, th I believe that a lot of the uh, the structures that are all over parts of the world, in, whether it's in Mesoamerica or or Egypt or other places that are now that they are now discovering, but to a certain extent, uh, the American Indian community of uh, what they call American Indians were not so advanced as these other places. And I believe the reason is that they all always had natural, natural uh, monuments, if you want to call it that, 
And I believe that the reason they made pyramids out there is because it's out there in the middle of uh, an area where there's not many mountains, not many uh, features that they can actually uh, come down and provide a lot of different, what I call the uh, a system of uh, a web system type approach. But out here in the Southwest, we have what they call sacred sites, different mountains all around America, clear down to Mexico, and uh, also civilizations that existed before and our ancestors have always said that, well, the monuments were there when they arrived at those places. When we look at the, the, the different tribes as well, uh, do you think these tribes in general survived some sort of uh, cataclysmic event prior, that there were ancient civilizations prior to the native Indians, and it was the native Indians that survived whatever, you know, whether, whether it was a pole shift or whatever, you know, catastrophic thing may have happened to the earth before? All Indian tribes have a history, for example, of the Great Flood. Even out here in the Southwest, we have a lot of rituals that we go through that was, that was uh, used to sub, subside the, I mean the, the water that we still practice to this day. And even the, the prayer systems involve a lot of the catastrophic things that happened in the past. And uh, according to the Hopi and the Zuni, this is considered the fourth world. We are now in the fourth world. And it's very interesting that both tribes and are saying that we are now at the end of the fourth world, which means that this, what we're going through right now, we're at the end of what would be probably an era or a time period of, of some sort that says we're at the end of that. And now that a lot of other writers about history and about the activities related to the earth and the universe are thinking in the same line. But the American Indians have known that for thousands of years because they were told. So how many different races interacted with the um, with the different tribes, do you think? Do you think it was just from one star system, or do you think it was from many different No. Uh, a lot of people, uh, or at least the American Indian community at large, they talk about the origin of their ancestry from different, different constellations, different star systems. Uh, for example, if you look at the Cherokee tribe, their logo of their their flag is is the it's got seven seven pointed star, and they claim that their their ancestry was created by the Play, Palladium people. You look at out here in Hopi. They they talk about the Orion, the Orion constellation, and. And we also in Zuni have references to all the different constellations or or the throughout the uh, well, well for example the galaxy the Milky Way galaxy is often referred to as one of the medicine societies came from of course the Milky Way galaxy is humongous. But if you listen to a lot of their rituals and their prayer systems, there's always references made to the different, for example, like Orion's Belt, the Big Dipper, um, Pleiades, and other star systems that it's very hard to interpret because it's in the original language of our people. And so in each group has their own reference. And we are not, we are a mixture of many different groups that came from the Star People Connection. Do you think there was any interaction with the women as well? Do you think there was any seeding that took place? I believe there was because that's why uh, I, the abductions have been going on for 
for thousands of years. And that's one of the reasons that they, uh, in, uh, in, for example, in Zuni, they had to go into some type of a truce so they would not have abductions. And so that's where the Kachina Society came about. The Kachina Society are represented representatives of those e ETs that are carried out by the the humans, uh, mostly men in our tribe. And there is a lot of stories. There's a lot of history about it. But however, in recent times, with, I'd say within the last 50, 50 years, that information is not passed on to the younger generation. Why is that? Because that there's the the influence of the external uh, information systems, television, movies, and right now the internet, and also the interference of the governmental structures that have invaded the reservations have developed a disconnect with the history, the basic history of the American Indian people and by replacing it with a welfare system. So they rather than going in there and learning all the system, and of course throughout throughout the last uh, three, four hundred years, the influence of the church and the influence of the military and, and invasion of other people throughout the, the globe has come in there and they distorted the teaching, teachings of the American Indian community to their generations uh, that will follow their lead. And so the interference has been made by the United States government. They used to say that uh, to us when we were kids, they actually used to not let us speak our own language in the school systems. They would not even allow us to do our prayers in in our in our system or or their system because they're the invaders. And especially the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church really took a lot of effort to to not use our uh, prayer systems or rituals because they said that that was not the way to do it. So the Christianity uh, part of, I mean, the Christianizing of the American Indians did a lot of harm to the history and the practices of the American Indian. This side of the, the uh, Mississippi River was run by the, the, Saint, uh, the Franciscans and the other um, well, actually, the Franciscans and the the uh, the uh, Jesuits were the two groups that really destroyed a lot of the culture and the and the language. So there's a lot of stories, especially up in Sioux country, how they used to treat them. So they, they, so Christianity had a created a lot of damage to our way of life and to our culture. Follow that. Following that was the United States military. The military, the uh, Indians were actually sent to military compounds, and so even to this day, uh, the, the American Indians have have absolutely no ownership of any land on the ones that they had for thousands of years. So when the Kachinas uh, used to visit the tribes, they would come, and the Kachinas were the ETs, if you want to call them that, just you know, yeah. as a as a word. Um, but when the e, but when the Kachinas used to visit, they would visit in their in their pure form. They wouldn't look human. They would look in a, some sort of a, well. They, they were not human looking per se. They were ETs, and since they're from different parts of the the galaxy and they each one of them looked strange they were not they didn't look alike well maybe in some groups they did but according to the the information that have been passed on to me by the elders they were very uh, they were not like humans so they had to put on natural 
uh, plant plant life uh, to to hide their I guess grotesqueness if uh, according to the humans. So this went on for many many years, and then finally they switched over into actually making masks that you see nowadays when you go to Hopi or Zuni of the Kachina. Zuni and Hopi are the only ones that actually practice those. The other tribes have been Christianized, so they do not uh, practice that. Maybe a small handful of them do. Are the Kachinas still with us now, do you think? Yes, they'll always be with us. What is their purpose now? The purpose of the Kachinas is to bring rain and to bring seed and other good good things and primarily also to uh, to bring joy to the villagers, I mean the village people, I mean the, throughout the whole country. And they're also, uh, they're also warriors and they're protectors. So anything that has to do with uh, protecting the humans and the earth is their function. But if there were Kachinas among us now, they would look human? No. They would still be in their their form that had been for, who knows, millions of years. What are some of the spiritual teachings of the Kachina then? What, uh, what are some of these uh, teachings that have helped the, the tribes to uh, progress like they did as well? Well, everything that, everything that is ex uh, from the Star People connection is, is compassion. It's always compassion. It's always to take care of each other it's always to uh, be connected to all the universal things and to be, and especially in the, with each other by humanness, to be kind to each other, to help each other, and also to be um, constantly being in connection with them by prayers, rituals, and uh, even to this day, we, when we sit down to a meal, it's like the Christians sitting down and and praying for before they eat. In the Indian community, such as Zuni and Hopi, we what we call they take uh, the food before anybody eats. We call we we call it cutting the food. We take portions of our food before we eat. eat either put it in. A, a, center bowl on the table and after that then whoever whoever is designated will take it to the in the old days we used to have rivers now we feed them through fireplaces and we don't have fireplaces anymore so sometimes we just take them out there to the to the ground and bury it or actually just go out there and feed them and so even though that they're supernatural gods they also have to eat. So that's our connection. We give a piece of ourselves to them. And so we, they are always present with us. Are there any other teachings that come to mind? That uh... Well, there's a lot of teachings that uh, Kachina is only one order. There's also the medicine orders that we also were, or they also are like, the Kachina system is that we also have that that was given to us from the star people. And each one of these groups are sort of like specialties, like in a hospital. If you go into a hospital, you got your internists, you got your surgeons. So they have the same setup throughout the whole universe. And this is the one that we also the medicine people also are representatives of those. They are not. They are not healers. They're conduits of those people when people get sick, and they need their hand or their help. And so there are so many orders within the within the system. For example, there's another one that's called a warrior society order. The war has always been going on for for many years. And the Indian tribes have been uh, recruited or, or drafted to fight the wars for, for the people that tried to destroy them. 
So all Indian tribes have warrior societies. And uh, the veterans are the ones that actually get dependent on the tribe, how they get themselves, I mean, how they, re, how they put their uh, young men and women into those orders. Each tribe has their own way. So with your own journey, um, have you had your own um, spiritual experiences or your own experiences with any kachinas or UFOs? Well, I, the kachinas and UFOs are, are related. Uh, there's a lot of people who will never talk about these things. And simply for the reason that uh, you you become ostracized, especially in this in the village in my tribe that I came from. If you talk like this, they automatically consider you uh, an out you know not not a person of good character. So uh, I try to limit myself into explaining a lot of other activities re that I have experienced. I've already, I've already uh, gone through the, the, uh, that process where I am no longer, I guess, appreciated but the information that I talk about. So, but I, it, a lot of Indian people throughout uh, throughout history have come up with things like what I'm doing and they're automatically rejected, ostracized, or completely accused of something that is bad about them. So this is why even though that there's a lot of people that have experiences, they would not talk about it. And, and the reason that I talk about it is because I have been trained not only on the spiritual part, but also from the scientific side of it. And I've always been, a, been active in the research of ufology, supernatural, and, and uh, other things that are happening right now throughout the, throughout the solar system and, and beyond. But the reason that I do this is because it's my own curiosity up to a point, and then later on it became a, it, everything connects with each other, whether it be the Kachina system, whether it be the, the history of other peoples that were here on, in this part of the land. When we talk about that, I'm talking about the Egyptians, the Buddhists, and, and other groups of people that have gone through our lands here way back there thousands and thousands of years ago. So it's not for, it's not my intent to expose anything that I consider sacred. It's just a fact that future generations need to have some type of a reference. It was very hard for me to get the information when I was a young, young boy and even up to the age where I started to become part of many different orders. People would not pass any information on to us, the younger generation. So that's why it got lost. And since it's oral history, once that person that has the knowledge dies, that's the end of the story. So my purpose in doing these things is to pass this information on with the technology that we have right now so that somebody in the future will look back and say, well, may, maybe this is why we are like this or what the future will be. My information that I have received is both oral from my, my elders and also the books that I have read throughout my younger years. What is the benefit then of going through some sort of spiritual awakening in someone's life versus kind of ignoring that path as well? The purpose is so you can better understand who you are and, and what your purpose in life is. A lot of people walk around there and say they're lost. They say, what, 
what am I supposed to be doing? So they go into other things that are on, like I, like I usually say, to the dark side, which means that they start getting false information. They start believing the, those people that are, are not true. And the other thing, too, is that it has an effect on the behavior. They go, to, they go into alcoholism or drugs, and even to the point of losing their mind, so to speak, and, and becoming a killer of, of humans. And so these are the controls that you need to have in order to have some type of a spirituality which everybody has within themselves, but they were never nurtured, nor, nor did they understand what they really have because there was nobody to guide them. My purpose in doing this type of things, that the interviews and passing bits of information that I consider worthwhile is so that people can find themselves in, in a way that they can help themselves because we all have it within the, ourselves. And when you obviously spend time at the conferences that you do and you, you give your um, talks, and which you've done now for many, many years, uh, you must see the, the state of um, you know, the conferences as they are, the state of ufology, the state of some of these bigger name speakers right now who um, probably are affecting people's awakening with false information. Well, it's just like anything else. Uh, if you look at, if you look at the organized religion, at large, uh, there's a lot of. Well, for example, there's over one hundred thousand religions in the world, and each one of them has their own interpretation. A lot of them are false. Some of them are made up. And the purpose of it is to get these people in to to follow their lead, which is not a is not a good one. But in those meetings that I go to, there's a handful of uh, people, in my opinion, that has absolutely no bearing on what what we are trying to convey at these meetings, because it's primarily based on ego primarily based on making a quick buck. And uh, a lot of these people are maybe even to a certain point that there are, they don't have the mental capacity to, to realize what they're doing is, is not true. So in a conference that I, conferences that I attend, there are many inform, information transfer that are made that a lot of people will believe it and follow that, follow their path, and in the end they will get hurt. So this is uh, that's that's what I have observed, and but I have no control over that. Why is the soul having this? If if do you believe in a soul? Mm -hmm. Why is the soul chosen if it does choose to to be here now? Why are we here now having this experience? I think that. I think it's. Uh, I think the soul is a journey. Uh, uh, the soul goes through a journey, and it's probably. Uh, I believe in going up through the ranks, so to speak. I think that the more ex the experience that is derived from here, on the water planet, is perhaps something that is like a lesson, that you take, while you're while you're going through a journey. It's my understanding that we do not, the soul never dies, only the body does. So when you start going through these different dimensions, if you want to call it that, I think that is, is this something that a lot of us probably volunteered to be here. And maybe others, uh, depending on who's interpreting it, it says that, well, you have to go back here because you go back there to Earth because you did not finish your assignment or you did something wrong, so you have to make up for it. I do not know what they mean by that, but as far as what I understand about myself is that I I have a purpose here. And we're all given, in the Zuni way, we're, 
we're given a pathway that is a certain time period. And this is why when, when you come over here, you're supposed to provide this information or do the job that whoever, however you got the assignment, whether it's by volunteering or whether you have been chosen by the gods to go over there and do your job while you're here. This is why the Zuni people do not believe in suicide because you cut yourself short. And they also know, uh, they teach us that you have a pathway that is already defined before you were even born. So you do not mess it up while you're doing that. And you, you do not deviate from that pathway. So these are the things that are taught us, especially my generation. Today, the generation that are now coming in, they have absolutely no teachings of any kind for that. So, so some of us that are left is uh, our purpose is to convey this information forward. How do you know you, that you're living in purpose? How do you know that you're uh, living a life of purpose? Does that come from f just the feeling that if it wasn't on purpose, you'd feel that you was in pain in the life? Well, th I believe that that way because I am now doing what I have never thought that I would be doing. The example of what I'm going through right now with you. I had never thought that I would be sitting here talking about some of the things that doesn't really mean much to anybody, but to a certain maybe, if it's only 1%, I've done my job of my community. So obviously, um, one of the things that I've covered a lot is the law of attraction. You know, you can attract the life that you want. You are a manifester. You can manifest what you want. You are uh, able to have what you want because, you know, when you put the thought out there and if you truly desire it mm -hmm. at a deeper level and it's meant to be, it will happen. But do you believe in the law of attraction? Well, I, I believe in the... You know, if you are, if you really want something to happen, you you go toward that goal, and you put everything into it. But that doesn't mean that you have to become so involved in it that you leave out everything else. Because eventually, you when you, remember that saying about ask and you shall receive type thing. And you have to be dedicated to that type of thought in the manifestation process. You just can't do that halfway and expect things to happen. You have to really work at it. But in so doing, you become accustomed to that. And you and it's the feeling that you're accomplishing something. Is that what uh, keeps you going? Not for yourself, but for others. In other words, that you're you're doing this, you're whatever you have, whatever your background is, and what the services you have, you do it to others. At my age right now, I am looking back at how I got to be helped. All I'm doing is just returning those favors, so to speak, not to the ones that gave it to me, but to the future generations. And this is. This is why I pass this information on to the best of my knowledge and ability. I do not, I do not have the, the capacity to say, well, this is right or wrong or whatever. All I do is that I pass it on to what my best available information is and to see if it works. I have done this myself and I, I have been the test case all my things that I have done, and if it works for me, I have that attitude about saying, if I can do it, you can do it. And um, when uh, you see the, the, the way that people live nowadays, and uh, you see some of the pain that people are going through, and uh, you know it doesn't have to be that difficult, 
no. for some people. What would you what do you think of the, the way that society is nowadays? <laughs> the society is what I call the dark force people. The society has succumbed because we lost our way of believing in yourself or in it or the or the majority at large they they quit believing in themselves they have been taken over by those charlatans that have misled them and there's many many diff many types of influences rather than looking into themselves and making their determination it's reversal now other people make the determination for them and they just go along with it and it's done by many factors and you can go into a whole list of them that are in the hundreds and uh, it's primarily uh, right now we're going through so many phases of it whether it be technology whether it be the food intake whether it be listening to the the false news, whether it's listening to politicians, it doesn't make any difference because they're all on the same negative force, uh, dark force approach to it, and people are really believing it. If the people start believing in themselves totally, but it has to be done at a very, very large scale, and they could actually stop that. Now, I've done a, well, still filming a documentary on channeling, the idea of um, opening yourself up to uh, another entity that would like to come through and speak, right? Mm -hmm. Or the ability to channel your higher self, to bring through your higher mm -hmm. self. Most people, when they channel, they bring through their higher self. It's that greater part of their soul that's mm -hmm. not always accessible to them when they're in this human state, but if you relax and open your mind up to mm -hmm. um, allow that through, it comes through. Did the Indian tribes ever have anything equivalent to channeling? I really don't know. Um, all I know is that in the spiritual connection, I don't know if they call it channeling, but all we know is that we were part of a universal system that we did it by prayer, by ritual, and by ceremony. And uh, we depended on ourselves to ask for guidance, ask for certain things, to, and then we, we had to go through a lot of different uh, techniques, for example, fasting, uh, prayer, meditation, but I don't, in my tribe, maybe there were channelers, but in those days we used to call them the um, people that had the ability to uh, sort of like, maybe like a psychic. If that's what they were doing, I did not know, I did not understand how they got it, but uh, the channeling has, is, uh, the term has really become within the last 20, 30 years. So I'm not really sure exactly what that, the procedure is because I never saw that when I was growing up. So in the tribes, there was someone that, in the tribes that had, a, or there were people in the tribes that had abilities that could tune in to uh, tell a future, fortune maybe, or, or, tell, or speak to someone that's crossed over in the tribe? Would that be possible? Yes, well, there were many sources, you know, like uh, I have been with uh, a lot of medicine men, and which I got a lot of information from them that had that ability. They had that ability to, to make predictions. I don't know what the white man term is for that, but they also had the, my, uh, even to this day, there's a lot of people that can tell 
I know of an individual that can tell you what the weather's going to be like tomorrow and the days that are coming. But there's many people like that in my tribe. Unfortunately for myself, I don't, I don't have any of those abilities. I just uh, so when when people think that I do, I I tell them they say no, I don't. I I just don't have that ability. Well, Clifford, I just want to say thank you so, so much for joining us. Sure. Absolutely.